That was an interesting one on GH Startup. Uh, people are indeed doing different things in business. Now it's time to talk about mission. And mission is supported by Star Ghana with thanks to Danida, UK Aid, and the European Union. One of the action points to note from the decentralization policy um, is uh, inclusive decision making in local government. And we know that 51% of Ghana's population is women. However, we're not really seeing uh, women being represented, strongly represented in local government and so uh, we are discussing that with two of the aspirants of uh, uh, the district assembly's um, election I'd be speaking to Beatrice Agbaleno uh, who is representing the Gao West as well as Charlotte Aram Jirako Tema West and also a lawyer and lecturer at Gempa Gloria Ofori Buedu who happens to also be an assembly an assembly woman uh, within the period of 2002 and 2006 so ladies you're welcome to New Day thank you it's great to have each one of you yeah I see a lot of experience um, cutting across board in fact you're actually sitting in order of experience I think um, Gloria you've been an assembly woman before um, for Beatrice, you have actually, you are still yes. um, an assembly woman. Yes, I'm going for the third time. Third, third time. time? Wow. What, what, what is encouraging you to stand in again? What is encouraging me to stand again? That my people are happy with me. There's a great change in my area. Okay, so what, what was the initial problem? What um, encouraged you to actually stand in the first place? Actually, I completed um, GHS. That year, I lost my dad. Oh. But fortunately for me, World Vision was building a school structure in my area. So alongside, they gave me a scholarship to the secondary school, to the training college. So I nearly dropped out of school. So because of that, that motivates me. When I became a professional teacher, I said, no, let me also part to others. Mm. So I put myself up. They voted for me the first time with the work. Initially, I was able to identify some of the school dropouts. Yeah. And I went to Village of Hope to lobby. They took them. It was a, They have body facility. They trained them in various vocations, mm. sewing, hairdressing, yeah. batik tie and dye. So I can see about 21 of them now working happily. Okay. So because of that and other, other projects, yeah. people maintain me. And this time around, I'm running a project called One House, One Toilet. Okay. And that one is ongoing right now in my community. Okay. So based on that, my people are not even demanding posters this time. They oh. say they know me. So the few posters I have, they stop me to bring posters because they have seen a lot of tremendous development, development in my area. So that motivates me to go for the third time. Wow, that's good. So you want to complete what you've already started yes. by going for the third term. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Charlotte, you are brand new yes, in please. this. Yes, and please. it must have taken some sort of uh, encouragement from different areas. How did you decide? You probably have a family as well. Yes, of so, course. you know, you have your regular job, you have your family. Why do you feel like you can actually stand for, um, you know, um, assembly woman? Because it mm -hmm. comes with a lot of responsibilities as well. Yes, of course. I've seen that I have to stand for my community. Mm -hmm. Help them to do the uh, clean up and other things in the area because our area is not good. Mm. Acro electoral area. Mm -hmm. You can ask people. We have problems. The gutters, the rubbish, everything in area. That area, we need somebody who can work hard. Mm. It's not the men. The men are not doing anything now <laughs> because women, we can do better. Mm. Women, we can take care of our children in the house, yeah. our husbands, mm -hmm. so many people. So the moment we have that opportunity to do this work, yeah. this assembly, I know that I can do better. I can take off my community, those who can't do any company work and other things, I will help them to have some little, little work to do. Mm -hmm. Like the hairdresser, how my sister was saying yeah. it, hairdresser, mason, uh, so many things, yeah. computer and other things. Women, we can employ that people to work and have their own handwork to do. Yeah. That's why I want to do the assembly because I've been a nurse. Okay. Nurse don't want any dirty things. That's true. You know the nurse, what we can do. <laughs> we can do better at yeah. the hospital. We can have a, a patient for them. Yeah. So I've seen that the community need a woman yeah. to rule them, to take care of them. Okay. And my family know what I can do. Wow. So you're focusing more on um, job provision as well as sanitation. Sanitation. Okay, that, those are the problems that you, you've, yes, you've of course. Um, noticed. Yes, of okay, course. I'll come back to you though. Gloria, 
you're a lawyer and you've also uh, experienced you know being an assembly woman elected, with all elected the challenges assembly. elected assembly woman mm -hmm. um, what 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 were the challenges um, you faced in getting to that point I'll just say that um, I wanted to be part of it because at that time I was a feeder. Okay. And we feeder together with Abantu and other women groups were advocating for more women in politics, starting from the local government to the national level. So we were encouraged to experience it. You know, when you are leading, it's good yeah. to have the experience. So I, I contested and um, I loved working for the people. The only challenge was that because of the publicity, there were a lot of expectations. Oh, right. But at that time, we were given a monthly allowance of 10 Ghana cities. Oh, wow. And the assembly was all the way in Tema. From Adenta, I had to drive Ten cities. From the, through the motorway oh. to the Tema Municipal Assembly to support my community at my own expense. Mm. And I tried to get some support from development partners. A, a little, got some boreholes dark for the Adenta community, the Cadley School and the village, got support for street lights and neighborhood activity. Mm -hmm. And that was it. But after four years, I was exhausted. Mm. I couldn't go again, you know. So it is usually the logistics. The yeah. logistics were not there. Yeah. There have been some improvement. Now we have an assembly in the Adenta community. Yeah. So it's closer than driving all the way to Tema yeah. at that time. So, so those were some of the, the challenges. challenges. And before the whole feeder initiative, um, you probably wouldn't have, you know, stepped out of your comfort zone to take such a role. Uh, what do you think, you know, some of these things that hold women back from taking up these positions? Because you know the kind of benefits um, it has on women as well to be represented uh, in politics. I think it's passion and information. You know, when we look at the district assemblies, most of their internally generated funds are from the markets. Mm. And the local government is supposed to be a unit where there will be a financial base for development. Yeah. So I always say that when you go to the markets, who dominates? It's the women. It's the women. We don't even have a terminology for market men, even though they are also That's in the true. market. All the terminology, all the research is market, market women. women. So it's predominantly dominated by market women. Yeah. Women. That's the center and hub of our economy. Yeah. Okay, so if women are generating the funds, paying the fees, the levies, and what have you, what's wrong with them coming to sit in the assembly to take decisions? Yeah, interesting. Um, Beatrice, let's also talk about challenges on your part. Um, as a woman, um, this is your ninth year, you see? Yes. Your ninth year. Yes. How, what, what are some of those challenges that could have stopped you from continuing, but you still decided you were going to move on? And, and contest again my challenge initially i was a classroom teacher it was difficult for me mm. so fortunately the head said i have to be a subject teacher mm. so at the jhs i'm teaching gun yeah. so with that i've been able to resolve that uh, challenge and at time people think women that are into politics do not respect so, so they call me names but that did not stop me from contesting the second time, mm. neither the third time. Yeah. So these are the challenges. I'm a mother. I yeah. have to take care of my home, yeah. take care of my husband. It's not easy. Yeah. But at times I have to talk to my husband to uh, understand me. Mm. So it came to a point when the assembly motorbike they gave us, he ride me through the communities to do the work oh, okay. so i managed to convince him yeah. to join me to do the work initially it was not easy at mm. all he was not trying to understand because um because of I, I have to leave the home but when i became very humble to him he understood me and we are working together, together. even this morning before i came here i talked about my toilet project which world bank is supporting okay 70 uh, percent which is about 2,900, the individuals have to pay 1,100. Oh. And that project has been in the system for long. And I realized that in my community, since it's a bit rural, the open education is going on. Yeah. So I went back to the planning officer at the Gun West Municipal, together with the, with the contractor, Samalis, mm -hmm. 
So they understood me, my condition. And now they say we could use the local art artisans to do the work. So when you provide a structure, it's assumed the 1,100 is what you have paid to them. Because initially, when you pay the 1,100 as your quota, they will come and put out the structure. So I'm happy now my people are using the uh, local artisans. For instance, if I want to own the facility, I'm a mason. Yeah. I will invite the carpenter to come and help me build that facility. Then, when the carpenters own, I have to go and the mid mason have to go and help. Yeah. And it's going on. I requested for 500. Interest, uh, interestingly, we've gotten about 300. And the project is ongoing. Even today, as I'm speaking, some less is going to the community with slabs okay. so that you to. So the people are building the slab structure yeah. and they are not paying even one Ghana city. So, wow. so expert came from ministries last week to expect it mm. and they were happy with me i told them i need 500 i said woman the way you are work, working if it even if it is thousand they'll give you so i'm yeah. very happy wow that's something to that's lead that project. working yes, yes. and and uh, you as well charlotte what are the, the kind of challenges that you, you challenges. face along the way yes especially because you are quite new to this yeah yes. the challenges is not easy mm. but i know definitely i charlotte mm. i'll do my best <laughs> Yeah. I will do what my community wants. Because mm. we have a toilet problem. Come to two aqua area. Mm. When you come and see the toilet problem and the clean up, the development is very, 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 very dirty. Yeah. Oh, my sister, we need support. <laughs> we need somebody to support us. Abantu is doing well. Yeah. If it's not Abantu, I will not sit here. Abantu, thank you very much, Abantu. And I know they will help me out to help my community. Yeah. Because the toilet problem people's houses flooding yeah. and other things when there is one rain it's not easy for us yeah. and i've seen that that problem they will help me out to do it yeah so how, how far has um, your your campaign gone what's what's the progress like of your campaign oh my campaign is going well going well going well very very nice because <laughs> the guys are challenging okay the guys are challenging yeah. it's not easy but i let them know that i charlotte eram jerako I'm come to use the money I have for the community. I will not share money. They should know that we don't share money. Okay. Because the assembly, when we are sharing money to them, they will think you give them money, yeah. they will vote for you. Later when you vote for me, and I give you money, yeah. I didn't get money to do the toilet problem and the clean up, yeah. you tell me that, oh, this woman, you, you, share, you give us money, you promise that you'll do this. We don't want to put money into the assembly sharing money to people to people they should help us to come into power mm. then what i have for them i'll bring it out this nice one. one but has it been has the support has the support been there has it been encouraging oh by his grace mm. the assemblies are actually supporting you yeah. oh the assembly is not supporting it's about to is doing well about to the it's about to and my family too are helping me and the area brothers some okay. of them those who have money they are helping. They are doing well. They are doing well. Yeah, that's good to know. That's good to know. Gloria, I see that you've opened your, your book. Did you want to tell us something? No, really. I'm looking at the Women's Manifesto. Okay. That uh, Bantu has, you know, initiated. And I'm just looking at the provision which says that the government ensures that by 2020, 50% of appointees to district assemblies and to the offices of district chief executive and the district coordinating directors are yeah. women. Yeah, 50%. 50%, and I'm just looking at it, that this is a call from Abantu. But I'm also looking at the system of elections. Okay. Okay. Um, right now, we are looking at a referendum in, um, I think it's on December 17th. 17. 17. Yeah, 17. Where um, we are going to vote yes or no in respect of the constitutional provision. Yeah. So that hence for DCs will, and MC, M, M, MMDCs will not be appointed by the president, but rather elected. Yeah. Now, there's another provision in the constitution that talks of the fact that those who are contesting assembly elections are going in as individuals and they must not have any party okay. colors. But if we are going to have a referendum where DCs and MM, M metropolitan, municipal, and district chief executives are going to you know, become partisan, mm -hmm. then invariably we have to look at the Article 248 yeah. so that 
members of the assembly who are elected can also be able to show party symbols and colors. Mm. So I think the referendum should also look at the 248, the two. unless it's um, sink or non. Otherwise, there must be some form of provision for that too, so that we have a partisan um, head of the assembly and also partisan okay, elected yeah. members. But why do you think that is so important? Because it will be interesting already. We are complaining that we have an appoint, we have appointee heads of the assemblies, yeah. and then we have a third who are appointed, and then another two thirds who are elected. Yeah. You know, so in order to make it uniform, that's yeah. why we are having partisan DCs and MC. MC. You know. yeah. So we should also look at the issue of elected assembly members also becoming openly partisan mm -hmm. and being able to show party colors but do you that think is, that will solve anything well that is one side okay. the other side is the issue of women participation okay okay i i have been listening and reading around you know we have the issue of south africa we have the scandinavian countries where they see and even our constitution yeah. which says that the local government is the fundamental development unit yeah and so everybody must be involved I believe for a long time, our elections, the local government elections, when I contest, I think only about 20% of the population uh, voted, voted because they kept postponing the elections. Yeah. And so as part of getting people to be more involved, this issue of partisanship by the MPP government came up. Okay. You know, there were promises as far back as 2006. Mm. And now it's um, come December 17th, there's yeah. an opportunity. Yeah. However, when it comes to increasing women's participation, mm -hmm. my, my pos position is that instead of having, in the long term, I don't know about the short term, but instead of having par, um, individuals contesting yes. and winning by a vote or two, mm -hmm. why don't we rather have like the South African and some models in Europe, parties contesting yeah. so that the party that wins the majority of votes yes. will, you know, appoint the the MMDC, depending on the, which area, then the, and then the second percentage party will have the, um, the coordinate the, the, the presiding member. member. Mm. Then the third will, and then a, set, a second percentage of assembly members. Then the third party will have appoint another percentage of assembly members okay. till the last party, so, so that every across. so that. There will be a policy that in, uh, in those appointments, 50% mm. are women, and definitely women will include youth and um, disabled persons, yeah. so that we get more women up there. But if you are going to look at one man, one woman, one vote, yeah. and people being elected by just one or two votes and carrying the day, it generates a lot of, you know, rancor, bitterness, yeah. and people <laughs> fold their hands and they become more of spectators mm, than true. citizens. Yeah. So this is something we are discussing for yeah. the long term. Because we can, we've, we've, for the past how many years, I went into the assembly in 2002, true. and with the support of FIDA, Bantu, other women's yeah. groups, you know, we kept advocating more women, more women, but it's still the same. Yeah. The social culture or whatever factors are still so the, the same. same. Parliament increased to 275, but the percentage remains yeah. the well, same. That's, 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 that's a good one to note. Hopefully that we'll be able to get a change at some point in time. Sounds Hopefully. Yes. Um, we, 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 we've actually run out of time. Uh, I just want one word of advice uh, to women out there who would want to also participate in uh, something like this in the future. Just one word of advice. Just one word of advice. Who would take that? Would it be okay. Beatrice? Or? Oh, okay. okay. I think... Uh, Charlotte. I will thank my people, TV3. Thank okay. you very much for this opportunity. Mm. And I will thank my ladies and women. Okay. They should be proud. Mm -hmm. You have to be proud. Yeah. A woman has to be proud. Mm. I'm praying that we need proudness okay. and faithness. Mm. So those who are come to two electoral area, yeah. I pray that they should vote for me. Okay. They should give me normal sex. Number we six. are loving. <laughs> I mean, normal sex. Okay. Middle. Mm -hmm. They should have sympathy for me. Mm -hmm. You know, Akro area, we don't have women. Mm -hmm. This time we want to win. Mm -hmm. Women have to win. Okay. So, women, side by side. They should vote for you. They should vote for me. All right. Thank and Beatrice, you. your last words as well. Oh, thank you, Victoria, so much for the opportunity.
from day one. And Bantu Ashin Air, they've been giving us capacity building. Even this year, they've given us posters. We salute them for yeah. their good job. And my people up there, they did my letter area. You said you don't even need my posters. My job is speaking for me. So true to your word, try to maintain me. I'm hoping for 80% of the vote. And the rest 20, the two of them, how they will share it is not my problem. <laughs> I'm getting it. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you too. Uh, I've been joined by Beatrice Agbalenyo, uh, representing Gao West, as well as Charlotte A. Ram Jirako for Tema West. Um, they're running for um, uh, assembly women. And also lawyer and lecturer at Gimpa, Gloria Ofori Buedu who was also an Assemblywoman elect. Thank you so much for joining us here on New Day. Come December 17th, the elections will be on. Will you vote? You are encouraged to do so. And let's try and change the narrative and vote women into power. We'll see you uh, shortly after the break. Stay tuned.